So this is about a Jewish reporter who says that he was beaten up and he was basically um, beaten up, called a Nazi by Orthodox Jews in the New York City amid the tensions over the new coronavirus lockdowns. So this is in New York. And so this is by a Julian Kossoff out of Business Insider. So this is really, really something, you guys. I was like taken back by this but look at this is a bonfire and this bonfire was a protest and this is a protest by orthodox jews in the new york city area and in that bonfire are masks masks that you wear to protect yourself from coronavirus now let me read this so a jewish journalist says that orthodox jews assaulted him in Brooklyn, so Jacob Kornblum, or Kornblum, the national politics reporter for the Jewish Insider said that he was hit in the head, kicked at by an angry crowd of hundreds of community members during a protest over coronavirus restrictions. So the incident occurred at a protest following a decision by Governor Andrew Cuomo to enforce a local lockdown closing schools and non-essential businesses. So during the protest involving hundreds of Orthodox Jews who set a bonfire of face mask ablaze in the middle of the street in Brooklyn Borough Park, leaders have called for communal peace. So a Jewish reporter said that he was attacked in Brooklyn as tensions mount among New York's Orthodox Jews over the best response to the coronavirus, which has hit the community hard since March. So Jacob Kornblum, the national politics reporter for the Jewish Insider, covered the second night of protests. So this was night number two on Wednesday in the neighborhood, opposed to a new local coronavirus restriction imposed by Governor Andrew Cuomo. Cornblue, also a religious Jew, has been prominent in warning the close-knit community about the public health dangers of COVID-19. So Cornblue said that a mob incited a rabble-rousing or rabble-rousers that spotted and surrounded him and so he said on Twitter that he was hit in the head, kicked at by the angry crowd of hundreds of community members at the protest in the Borough Park, a southwestern region in Brooklyn, New York. He was also called a Nazi and spat on by his attackers. And so here he is on Twitter basically saying the same thing that happened to him that he was brutally assaulted and hit in the head, kicked at by angry crowds of hundreds of community members of the Borough Park protest. And while they were yelling Nazi and Hitler, <clears throat> after this is a person that recognized him, a Heshi Tischiller, he ordered the crowd to chase him down the street. So it was really, really violent and dangerous. And so on Friday, New York's mayor, uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio, he's the mayor of New York, he said that he expected police to make an arrest for the attack very soon. So Heshi Tischler, a pro, now this guy is a pro-Trump Orthodox Jew. Now we got him in all of our cultures, black, white, Hispanic, Latino, and also Orthodox Jew, where they're pro-Trump supporters. <clears throat> so this pro-Trump supporter, who's an Orthodox Jew and a Brooklyn City Council candidate, leading he was leading this protest and was accused of whipping up the crowd against Corn Blue, calling him a rat. So Corn Blue did not go to the hospital after Wednesday night's incident, but he said he has already pressed charges against Tischler because he incited this violence. So I'm just, this is my opinion, it looks as though he 
encourage this angry crowd to go after this these reporters. So, <clears throat> Business Insider co contacted Corn Blue for a comment on several occasions. So, on the same night, a group also had chased down and assaulted a Jewish freelance photographer, and a third man in the New York Post has reported this. So this is Jake Offenhartz. Right now is basically a pro-Trump dance party. Lots of media here after last night's violence, but no sign of similar chaos, though someone was chucking eggs a few minutes ago. And so this is basically them celebrating Trump and they're going around in a circle and so they're pretty much just like a pro-Trump dance party. So at Hesh's urging the crowd just surround and attack the journalist Jacob Horn Blue, they pinned him against the wall and shouted Moyser, which means snitch as New York our NYPD lost control of the situation. Really scary scene. Jacob is a pro, um, Jacob is a pro, okay, that's what it says, it doesn't have anything after that. So Borough Park is among the nine New York City neighborhoods that have been ordered into lockdown and to address localized spikes in coronavirus cases. The lockdown went into effect on Friday. And so all nine of the neighborhoods are home to Orthodox Jewish populations, and the lockdowns come during the celebration of the Sukkot and the Simchat Torah High Holidays. Gatherings in synagogues and yeshivas will be subject to strict social distancing restrictions. So local leaders told the New York Times the spike in infections is partly due to their beliefs that they have had achieved herd immunity, as they would believe, and in various coronavirus misinformation spread by President Donald Trump himself. So the president has overwhelmingly supported the Orthodox community, which traditionally backs conservative Republican candidates. So at a Tuesday night gathering in Borough Park, protesters lit a fire and threw cardboard boxes and face masks into the flames, according to NBC New York. So despite calls for peace and community leaders from the, those community leaders, Orthodox Jews who have warned of the dangers have who have been who have warned of the dangers have been increasingly targeted in person and on social media with the Yiddish insult of moisture, meaning informant to the enemies of the Jews, and in traditional belief system, punishable by death. And so, this is Orthodox Jewish men that move a wooden casket from the hearse to a funeral home in the Borough Park neighborhood, which saw an upsurge of COVID-19 patients during the pandemic, April 5th, 2020, in the Brooklyn Borough of New York City. And so they have a spike of coronavirus. So several leading Orthodox rabbis have spoken out against the strike within the community and denying the coronavirus threat as well. And so can you blame them because our leader in chief is basically not really following all of the protocols to safety? So what do you expect? So. That's in my opinion. So this is wild, lawless, uncivilized behavior, period. Flouting public health measures in hot spots in the middle of a pandemic. So it is the antithesis of the verse saying that what a wise, discerning people this great nation is, wrote Rabbi Nair E. Tversky a senior teacher at the New York Yeshiva University in the article on the Israel's news website. Okay, Arutz Shiva. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole article. 
And so I believe that was a question down there. So you can reread it, but it says period. It says this is why Obama's uncivilized behavior, period, allowing public health measures in a hot spot in the middle of the pandemic. So that's how it would have read. But so here in this video is like sort of like a dance and you see them celebrating and then here this is where the violence was beginning where they were starting to surround I guess they were chasing getting ready to surround and chase the the people away I think it looked like it was becoming a little bit violent but this one this this one is supposed to be the pro trump dance party <laughs> And that's really short. And then this one, this is where they started to surround and attack the journalist Jacob Corn Bloom. So this one is a lot different. This is not a dance party. This is um, violence being incited by allegedly it, it was coming from a Heshies, urging the crowd just surrounded and attacked journalist Corn Bloom. They pinned him against the wall and shouted, Moister, Moister, which means snitch, as the NYPD lost control of the situation. So. So it only takes one or two people to incite this type of activity um, to go down, but it's pretty crazy, isn't it? You know, these are people who I would have thought would not, you know, get this emotional, but of course, you know, look who we got in charge of things. And I, I mean, there's no stone left unturned. It seems like every city, every town, people are all wrapped up. And so this is just one incident. And so to extend this article um, onto other things that have been happening as well is that Trump, he holds campaigns despite the coronavirus concerns. So he's been holding indoor and outdoor campaigns since he's come back and so this is by the Reuters wire service and so it says Trump holds campaign rallies indoor despite coronavirus concerns so this to me does not show somebody who really cares about the people it shows that he cares about his own agenda basically is what I'm looking at and so it says this is by a Jeff Mason Henderson Nev okay so U.S. President Donald Trump held this NAV means Nevada, of course. He held um, a Nevada campaign rally at an indoor venue on Sunday despite the public health professionals' warnings against large indoor gatherings during the coronavirus pandemic. And so <clears throat> just take a look at some of the rallies that he's holding where there's like large, huge crowds of people, whether it's indoors or outdoors, he's been doing both. So, so a Republican Trump railed against the Democratic rival, former Vice President Joe Biden, suggesting that he was somehow soft on crime without evidence that he was taking drugs. So Biden wants to appease domestic terrorists and my plan is to arrest domestic terrorists. So this was Trump's saying. He said this 
to an enthusiastic crowd. So if Biden wins, the mob wins. So this is what Trump has been going around saying. So the president sought to back up his, his drug accusation by citing what he considered Biden's poor performance in debates with rivals for the Democratic presidential nomination. So I called for a drug test because you know what? I want a drug test because we don't want to have a situation like we could have with this guy, Trump said. So as to respond to Trump's drug remakes, the Biden campaign had no comment and instead criticized President leader his leadership amid the unrest in the cities and over racial injustice. So people in Nevada's crowd were seated close together and many did not wear masks. So I want you to hear that because every group that has supported Trump, a lot of these groups, you see them like what you've seen with the Jewish or the Orthodox Jews, where they're burning masks, holding these bonfires in these large gatherings. Right now they're in a hot spot and they're resistant. Um, then you have Trump, he's holding rallies, large rallies, either they're, if they're indoor or outdoor. They say outdoor rallies are less, um, you know, less damaging in terms of contraction of the virus. But, you know, recently they held an outdoor on the lawn um, gathering. And so we'll get into that. And so the president appears to have forgotten that this country is still in the middle of a global pandemic. So Sislot tweeted, so Biden has also criticized Trump for holding campaign events that put people at risk of contracting the coronavirus, which has killed more than 194,000 people in the U.S. And so Trump played down the virus in its early stages and has alternately embraced the disregarded advice from public health experts who encourage mask wearing and maintaining social distance to prevent its spread. And so the president's campaign portrayed that the rally at a large warehouse in Henderson as an opportunity for supporters to exercise their right to peaceful assembly under the U.S. Constitution First Amendment. And so if you can join tens of thousands of people protesting in the street, gambling in a casino, or burn down small businesses in riots, you can gather peacefully under the First Amendment to hear the president of the U.S. spokesman Tim Murtaugh said in the statement. So healthcare experts say chances of infection are greater indoor events rather than outdoor ones. So participants at the rally were to have their temperatures taken before entry and may have been given, they're also given masks, but they would be encouraged to wear them at the campaign. So this is coming from a woman who is 64 years old. Her name is Rhonda Livingston. She says, I'm not worried about it. She says, I think we're relatively safe here. I brought a mask, but I haven't felt the need to wear it. So this is coming from this woman. So, of course, look who's pretty much showing people not to be afraid. And he's saying, basically, he's been going on national TV saying that the virus is going to disappear. And so there's a lot of misinformation going on. So Trump, who is trailing Biden in national opinion polls and in Nevada, Nevada, has stepped up his frequency in the rallies in recent weeks, but he has held most of them in outdoor venues or in large open airplane hangars to help minimize risks. But still, it's risky because the gatherings, the gatherings are still large and people aren't wearing masks. So here's another situation here that I was looking at where the doctor basically was saying that it was okay for him to resume the campaign rallies, but not that he is himself free of coronavirus. And so, but in the article, it goes on now. I want you to see this crowd in, in here. You see all these people, and then you see President Donald Trump, who removes his mask before speaking to the crowd of supporters Saturday. This was Saturday at the White House. And so this is by an Ellie Stokels. Um, Michael Flan or uh, not Flanagan, but Michael Finnegan and Jonathan Lemire. So this is out of Washington. So President Trump addressed hundreds of supporters 
uh, from the White House on Saturday, his first prolonged public appearance since announcing eight days earlier that he himself had tested positive for the COVID-19 coronavirus and a clear sign of his eagerness to return to the campaign trail, which his doctor later authorized him to do despite giving no indication that he had tested negative. <laughs> okay, so the Trump administration adopting the defiant rhetoric of the president's campaign classified his afternoon speech from the Truman balcony to a few hundred supporters as a peaceful protest on the official schedule and insisted that it was not a campaign event occurring on the grounds of the White House. Okay, but from the very moment Trump serenaded by the U.S. Marine Band's rendition of Hail to the Chief, walked out of a draped doorway and quickly removed a light blue face mask. His focus on electoral politics was clear. So get out and vote, he said. Vote, vote him into oblivion. And so Trump, who has often boasted about his long rally speeches be, being a sign of stamina, declared that he was feeling great but spoke for about 17 minutes. So a photographer covering the event captured a close-up image of two small bandages on the president's raised hand possibly where he has been receiving intravenous injections. So several hours after the event, White House physician Sean Connolly issued a memo stating that the president's no longer considered a transmission risk to the others and that advanced diagnostic tests taken Saturday morning show that there is no longer evidence of actively replicating virus. But the White House still has not disclosed when Trump last tested negative. Okay, so for the virus and Conley's memo did not state that he has tested negative following a week of convalescence, including a three night stay at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center where he received experimental treatments. So his brief appearance before a group of supporters appeared amid mostly at satting <clears throat> Or actually, it was not sadding, but it was stating that the president's desire to return to the campaign trail and set the table for a resumption of rallies on Monday. So attendees on Saturday wore baby blue t-shirts that read MAGA hats uh, and the red MAGA hats while standing close together on the South Lawn and were required to bring masks and were given temperature checks, but few and the crowd seemed to be wearing them as Trump. So basically, a lot of people weren't wearing masks, despite the the strong possibility that you could end up contracting it from somebody you don't even know may be, you know, positive with COVID. And so some were even sat by there by what is called Blexit which is the Black Exit, a group founded by the controversial conservative and activist Candace Owens, which covered travel and lodging costs for those attending a pro-law enforcement march on the National Mall before the White House event, according to the report of ABC News. So this is everybody, every culture, every group, just being misinformed, you know, um, to just gather for these rallies and not wear masks. And, you know, even in hot spots, just to put yourself out there based on this guy's touting that the virus is going to disappear everywhere and that he's in control of all of this. So Trump's campaign has now announced three nights of consecutive rallies, beginning with an appearance in Sanford, Florida on Monday night, followed by the events Tuesday and Wednesday night in Johnstown, PA, and Des Moines, respectively. So we're uh, starting very big with our rallies, he said, because we cannot allow our country to become a socialist nation, is what he's saying, in quotes. So the president's last rally in Minnesota 11 days ago, the evening after delivering an angry, uncontrolled performance in the first presidential debate, which is, if you click on this, you can see that. 
And so an event that precipitated along with the positive um, test for the coronavirus roughly a day later, another downward dip in the polls. So Democratic nominee Joe Biden, who has campaigned around the nation as Trump, has been convalescing in the White House, criticized Trump's handling of the pandemic during the rally Saturday in the western Pennsylvania region. So America deserves a president who understands what people are going through, he said in Erie. So you're facing a real challenge right now, and the last thing you need is a president who exacerbates them. So Biden spoke to a small crowd in the parking lot marked with white circles to keep spectators from sitting on folding chairs a safe distance apart. Okay, so he's still following the rules. He's wearing a mask and he's trying to keep people safe. So citing the millions of lost jobs and thousands of businesses that have been shut down, he added. So my heart goes out to everyone struggling in this economic crisis. Simple neglect on the part of this administration. End quote. Um, Biden. So Biden also stressed that his working class roots in Scranton and rebutted Trump's false accusations that he plans to ban fracking, a source of many jobs in that region. So let me be clear, no matter how many lies he tells, I'm not, 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 not banning fracking, period, Biden said. So although the president is clearly eager to resume campaigning, it's unclear whether he has a plan to reverse the current trend lines of an election that is already underway in numerous states. So Trump will miss out on perhaps the biggest opportunity of a breakthrough that could change the course of the race, the second presidential debate. So the commission on the presidential debates on Friday canceled the October 15th shutdown or showdown that is showdown after Trump said that he wouldn't take part um, after organizers announced it would take place on in a Miami, but virtually. So if you hadn't seen that, Trump, he, he basically didn't want to do a virtual debate. And, and this was a change that was prompted by the president contracting the virus. So that was the reason why they wanted to do it virtually for safety precautions, but he refused to do so. So that just adds more to what, what kind of person we're dealing with right now. So as he has in recent days and nearly 10 hours of phone interviews with friendly cable news and radio hosts, so Trump's brief remarks offered a familiar mix of triumphant boasts, rosy predictions, and attacks on Biden and the mainstream media as well. So more than anything, he said his mere appearance in public again sought to pro project an image of a healthy president, Trump, who has resumed working in the Oval Office despite the risks of employees there, demonstrated the same nonchalance about the virus that has dismayed a majority of Americans. And so <clears throat> Trump promised the vaccine that was coming very, very soon. With that, the sluggish economy with 18 million people now out of work that would rebound. Saturday's speech like the Republican National Convention festivities in August amounted to another flagrant use of the White House grounds for political purposes, which is technically a violation of federal law and it came two weeks after trump's rose garden event that has been labeled a super spreader event of course for the virus more than two dozen people linked to the white house have contracted coronavirus since the president's september 26 event announcing judge amy coney barrett as his nominee to the supreme court having seen all of this think about who this person this leadership is and what we've been going through and how irresponsible these gatherings have been and all the misinformation we've been getting has caused a lot of violence to ensue having said that i'm gonna let this video go you be the smart one to decipher whether any of this makes sense in my eyes i see it is is more signs of irresponsible and violence that is coming from politics from yours truly that is in, in, in leadership having said this like comment subscribe thank you for listening